Hey everyone, Steph here from Old Guy Melts Plastic. Um, I'm taking a break from my normal tinkering and I apologize for the state of my workbench at the moment. It's a bit of a mess. Um, to address some comments I've received in recent videos with regards to CAN bus wiring and specifically the resistor pins jumper terminations and where they need to be placed on the various devices in the network. So the traditional CAN bus documentation uh, you know, says that the CAN H and CAN L um, should have when measured across the, um, the, the wires uh, during power up should have 60 ohms of resistance uh, between them. And typically the way we achieve this is for the different devices in the network to have 120 uh, ohm resistors uh, jumpered, pins jumpered between uh, on them. So that, you know, if you have two such devices uh, jumpered, then that gives you the 60 ohms of resistance that you're looking for. Um, so here I have a BTT UTC and uh, it is wired uh, to 24 volt from the power supply and I'm feeding the first of my three EBB36s over this CAN bus wire. So it's powering this EBB36 over CAN bus. Um, and then I've got power from this other microfit port over here broken out into some Wago clips and then from that I'm using the Wago clips to send power and ground to the other two EBB36s. It's a little janky but it's working for now just to kind of prove a point. Um, and then you'll see that I have CAN-H now you know this first EBB36 gets the CAN-H and CAN-L feed from the um, I guess chain flex wire here cable uh, but then it feeds over these pins these uh, two pins that are uh, available they're, they're basically a CAN-H and CAN-L pass through if you want to think of them that way. So I'm wiring CAN H and CAN L from this EBB36 into this other one, into the microfit connector there, and then again from this EBB36 into the third EBB36 into that microfit connector. Now, again, traditionally the documentation says that you should have your pins jumpered on the devices on either end of the chain. And while I'm not going to argue that point, here I have the first node in the chain is my UTC and it has the jumper pins. The next node in the chain is this EBB36 and these are the jumper pins here and they're not jumpered. The third node in the chain is the second EBB36 and it does have the jumper pins there, uh, the pins jumpered rather. And then the last one in the chain does not. And yet, when I come over to my terminal window and I run a CAN bus query, it in fact returns all three nodes. So to those people who say that the jumper pins are done wrong in my other videos, um, I'm not saying I'm right, but it is working. So if I'm wrong, I need a better explanation than because the documentation says so. Because in my mind, when I think of how these nodes are behaving on the CAN0 network, it's like they're nodes on a ring rather than nodes wired in series. Um, I know that's not what the spec says, but conceptually that's how I visualize it in my head, and they seem to behave that way. So if there's a better explanation as to why I'm seeing ring-like behavior on these devices wired in series, um, I'd like to hear it um, because I, I'd like to learn new things and educate myself. But it is working in the state that it is right now where I have no, you know, node zero and two, we'll call it. So zero, one, two, three. I have the jumper pins, uh, the pins jumpered on nodes zero and one, and, uh, zero and two, and one and three are not jumpered, and everything's working just fine. So um, that's my little end of rant for today. Um, and to those people who comment that you know you're doing this wrong, um, maybe have another look and see what you can arrange in your own configurations. Maybe what we think is right is being documented wrong. I don't know. Um, so yeah, food for thought. 
Anyhow, thanks for watching. End of rant.